Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the one hand deadlift. It got requested a lot and it's one of my personal favorite lifts even though I know I have a lot of favorite lifts but this is really up there. It really exemplifies the uh, both the practical and the cool fun side of full time strongman lifts and it also serves as a really good introduction to one hand lifting. So we're going to go into the history of the lift, the practice, the tips, you know, the benefits, why you would want to do it, and try to get a really comprehensive tutorial. You can't really talk about the history of the one-hand deadlift without talking about Herman Warner. Depending on which source you believe, his top one-hand deadlift on a barbell was either a conservative estimate, 660, that's very well documented that he did 660 on a revolving barbell just like I have here, and then some accounts say he did 727 on a revolving barbell. Some say maybe it wasn't revolving. Some say it was some other sort of implement. There's some controversy there. Either way, an insane number. I think his max two-hand deadlift was like around 800. Anyway, a ridiculous number, but he was far from the only person doing big one-hand deadlifts. Uh, quite a few people pulled over 500 pounds. Um, and it didn't stop being competed you know, in the very early 20th century, like people think, it was still being uh, competed into the 50s. I've seen articles from the 50s talking about the prospects of various people maybe beating Herman Warner. So, you know, this, this didn't go away as early as a lot of people think. And of course, the USAWA folks have kept it alive. They still do this. And they do a lot of other variations as well. But why would you want to do this? What's the point? Well, it's actually a very practical lift. Um, believe it or not, one of the key reasons that I use this lift in my training, other than just that it's cool, is that it gives your low back a break from really, really heavy weights. Even though, yes, you're putting a lot of stress in your upper back, you're still using a lighter weight than you would for a two-hand deadlift when you one-hand deadlift. So you're actually potentially giving your lower back a little bit of a rest, and just your whole body in general from the really heavy weights. One of the key benefits of full-time strongman moves is that they allow you to do more with more medium weights where you're not always just beating yourself up with the really heavy weights that you wouldn't power lifting. Believe it or not, just having that variety with a one hand deadlift is good. But on the flip side, it also is a heavy overload for the muscles of your upper back. It really engages your lats a lot more than two handed deadlift varieties, your traps obviously. Um, it uses your hamstring, depending on the version you use, it can use your hamstrings in different ways and be a little bit more stressful on one of the hamstrings. Obviously, you want to work this on both sides to even things out, right? Um, obviously, there, you know, there's a lot of overall tendon strength benefit to it. It really strengthens your core, your obliques, because you have to stabilize. Not as much as a suitcase deadlift, but still, there's a big element of that. Um, and it, all, it also serves as a really good foundation for all the other one-hand lifts. A lot of the principles that you use in the one-hand deadlift can carry over. Um, a lot of people who don't know the lift are either overly impressed by it or try to write it off. You'll have people that say, oh wow, you can deadlift 500 pounds one-handed, what can you deadlift 1,000 pounds two-handed? No, of course not. I deadlift, I've deadlifted 600 conventional and you know a little over that Jefferson, potentially I could do a little over that hack if I ever tried. But you know, my, my one-hand deadlift is not that much lower than my two-hand deadlift. And you know what? So, so then you have some people that say, ah, it's just a trick, you know, it's just hook grip. My response to that is, okay, well, let's see you do the trick then. You see a lot of really, really strong people, just a lot of muscle, a lot of strength, throw on a strap and lift 500. You know, you see a lot of that. And then you see a lot of grip guys doing legitimately more impressive grip beats, like, you know, no hook grip one hand deadlifts with much more weight or, or with um, much more weight than I can do, but obviously much less weight than you can do with a hook grip. And that, that is more of a grip beat. I would actually, I would go so far as to say that a double overhand deadlift at the same weight is probably a better pure grip beat than a one hand deadlift with hook grip, believe it or not. That being said, there are gonna be a lot fewer people that can do the one-handed deadlift than the double overhand deadlift. So it's not all about grip strength, there is a grip strength component. So what is it actually testing? I would say it's kind of testing your well-roundedness as a brute strength athlete. There's no mobility or anything, but 
you need a good mix of muscle mass, tendon strength, you know, grip strength. You do have to have some grip strength for it. I, I did actually have to train my grip extensively to get up to 500, but not maybe as much as some people think. And then of course, you know, mental fortitude and endurance. So that's what it's testing for. You know, a lot of people have, you know, part of the picture, not that many people bring it all together. So that's really what it's testing. And just a whole lot of tendon strength. Not, yes, you have to have a lot of muscle, but how well is your body put together to concentrate all the force your muscle can produce or a, a very large percentage of it into one small area of your body. So, you know, that, that's kind of where it is. And a lot of these old school lifts, you'll see that tendon strength and the, the one hand deadlift is a great way to train that. And like I said, it's a good introduction to a lot of the other one hand lifts. So let's get into it. Okay, first off, let's, let's set up. There are two ways to do this. You can do it facing the bar, basically like a conventional stance, or you can do it in a straddle stance. Either one is legal. Um, generally speaking, the conventional stance is going to look cooler. You just look badass when you do it. But the straddle stance is probably going to give you a more decisive lockout with heavier weights and allow you to actually lock out a little bit of heavier weights. So your stance should be about shoulder width. There actually were rules on how far you could be apart. You couldn't do a sumo stance. Sumo is out because as, as you'll see, this ends up being a really short range of motion movement anyway. Your range of motion is gonna be shorter than your regular uh, two-handed deadlifts anyway. So when you get into some sumo, especially if you're doing some kind of crazy straddle, you can get into some really ridiculous short range of motion. So sumo is out. I'm not gonna to get too in depth into what your foot stance has to be. Basically it should be about shoulder width. It can't be too wide. Right? And you wouldn't necessarily want it that way anyway. I like to have my feet under me when I do this. Um, like I say, depending on whether you just want to look cool or whether you want to get the highest weight possible, pick straddle versus behind the bar. One little tip that you probably won't hear from anyone else, when you're doing this or any other one hand lift, you actually want to set up a little bit offset. I'm not setting up right in the middle of the bar with my feet in the middle of the bar. I'm setting up to grip with my hand a little bit off, set, off the center line of my body, because it's gonna go there naturally anyway. You might as well start with it there. You're not gonna keep your hand in the middle. You're actually gonna drift a little bit, so you might as well start with it that way. Whether you do straddle or conventional, you wanna have your hand a little bit offset. That goes for pretty much any um, one-handed lift. Another really important tip. See how I've got the center of the bar taped? Any kind of one-hand lifting you're doing on a barbell, it really pays to measure it off, tape the center off. Turkish get-ups, anything. If you're gonna do any one-hand lifting, just tape the center. That way you don't have to worry about where to grip. Um, okay, so you've set up for it. Now it's time to get your grip. You're gonna want a hook grip. I'm not the expert on hook grip. Learn from an Olympic weightlifter that are masters. But basically, you're gonna wanna set your thumb first. Get your thumb set in there really nicely and then wrap your fingers as many as you can around your thumb. That way, the action of your thumb against your fingers is going to keep the bar from rolling out of your hands. This, this counteracts the rolling tendency. Now you don't have to fight the bar rolling out of your hand. It sucks, it hurts, but it's very, very, very strong. Some people find that they can tape the thumb to protect it a little bit. I do that for some lifts. It's always been my grip weaker on one hand deadlifts. Figure out what works for you. If this is your first introduction to, to hook grip, um, start light and be very, very uh, gradual with it. You're gonna have to build up that tendon strength. You don't wanna overload it. For any kind of heavy tendon strength move, uh, slower is better. You, um, you want long rest periods. Like when I train one hand deadlift, I typically take three weeks off in between. I don't do it all at once. Uh, or I don't do it like week after week. I'll, I found that you know three weeks, once every three weeks is probably good because otherwise you're gonna just be too sore. Um, you don't necessarily need to train these heavy overload tendon strength lifts quite as, as frequently as something that you're more trying to build skill on. Let's see. Okay, so set your hook grip. Now, 
you're, you're gonna probably want to use a little bit more more quads, a little bit more legs than you might on a conventional lift. A little bit more like a, I guess a Jefferson lift, and it's gonna be the same either way. I'll just I'll, I'll demo. You see, I'm still I'm still getting a little bit more quads than I probably would for a conventional lift. Just get that pull, go to lockout. Now, a lot of people said, hey, you're cheating. You're using replacing your hand on your knee, that's cheating, no. In this or any other one hand lift, that's part of the technique. If you have a second hand, you're more you're encouraged to put it on your knee to brace. That's important for any for maximum performance in any of these one hand lifts, so don't hesitate, go ahead and do that if you have the hand. Okay? Now another misconception. What constitutes lockout? Well, you don't have to have the same kind of lockout as you need on a conventional deadlift and powerlifting. The rules for lockout actually state you just have to get your, your knees straight, you have to get your legs straight, and you have to have the bar at least at knee level, but not it doesn't necessarily have to be over, but it has to be at least at the level of the knees with the legs straight. That's it. Okay? You don't have to completely straighten your upper back because what happens is it just with heavier weights it just gets extremely hard to completely straighten out even with this light weight you can see i mean this wouldn't pass in a two-hand deadlift but all i really need is this if i can do this and hold it there for a judge's count i'm good to go obviously the higher you are the better and that's where the straddle comes in um, you'll probably lift the same weight off the ground to shins either way, but the straddle is really useful for just getting that nice decisive lockout. It makes your um, your body kind of gets jammed into itself and it gets it gets hard to fully straighten out. It makes it a little bit easier there. Um, you're just kind of you're not you're not dragging the bar up over your legs as much. Um, hard to explain, but it makes it makes that decisive lockout just a little bit easier at the expense of not looking quite as cool. But either one's perfectly legal. Right. So that's pretty much it. Um, usually, when you're performing a one-hand deadlift, your failure point, like I say, is probably going to be just not a good lockout. Usually, you're going to get it off the ground unless you just completely misjudge the weight you were lifting. Um, if you just can't get it off the ground, it would be either a grip issue or a mental issue. In some cases, your grip might just not be there. In some cases you might not be pushing through the sensation that your thumb is about to fall off. It does feel like that. You push up in the weight slowly, but just understand that it's gonna feel horrible, but your thumb is tougher than you think. If you've progressed slowly and added weight slowly over time, it's not gonna fall off. It's not gonna be rolling around on the floor with blood coming out of it. That's not actually gonna happen, even though it seems like it will. Okay, but yeah, just still progress slowly, right? Um, but usually when you're failing a one hand deadlift, it's probably just going to be, you get it off the ground, but you can't just, you can't get to even the, um, even what would count as a lockout in one hand deadlift, the knee height with a leg straight, you know? So, you know, that's, that's usually that. Um, obviously you're going to want to tend to do a lot of low reps on this. It's really brutal on the thumbs to try to do high reps. One thing that I do. I actually use straps. Um, I'll, tra I'll train the muscle aspect of it with straps. I'll do some reps with straps or even some heavy overloads with straps within, you know, an element of, uh, you know, hook grip as well just to train the lift because you have to train what you're trying to do. And while I said this isn't the, um, the most grip-oriented feat, there, there are plenty of other more grip-oriented feats. Um, there are some valuable grip exercises that I got from Herman Gorner that helped me build up to where my grip is strong enough for that 500 pound deadlift. I, I, I remember I always just had issues with my, with my skin coming off, it just felt horrible. And my grip wasn't quite there back around 450. Uh, did some, some of the corners exercises and 500 actually felt easier than 450 on my, on my hand. So let's go through these in order of difficulty. Uh, one of his exercises was a one hand deadlift just with the uh, bar just in the first joint, with the thumb out and everything like that. So you, you can see I'm not really gripping it except in the first joint. And 
and that's going to be a fairly lightweight exercise, but it's good for that bar specific grip strength. Uh, he would do one with a thumb along the bar like this, but not wrapping. Okay. He would do one with the thumb actually wrapping, just a straight up one hand deadlift, no hook grip. Obviously these are progressively heavier variations. This is an interesting one that I really like. He would do a bent arm one hand deadlift with a hook grip. You start off with the arm bent and keep it that way the whole way through. And that kind of ties in the, the forearms and the upper back more. Very interesting. And then he would do basically a high pull as well, which I'm not going to demo because I'm not sure, you know. Anyway, so that about wraps it up. Um, let's see. I think I covered most everything. Let me know if you have any questions.